minds, welcome back to Learn with SOS. My name is Steve Sebastian also of Kane School of Business and today I'm going to walk you through process flow. We're going to look at some important parameters. In our previous video, we looked at um, the process flow diagram and we said the diagram contains some parameters that we are going to look through today and I told you to get your calculators ready because the parameters we are going to go through today involves a little bit of calculation but they are not difficult but before we get started please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share to stay connected all right let's crack on my calculator is here so please get yours ready now let's begin with cycle time now if i ask you how many minutes does it take you to prepare banku someone will say 10 minutes someone will say 20 minutes someone will say 15 minutes someone will say 30 minutes well if you, you can combine all these minutes together and find the average so we can say on average it takes 15 minutes to prepare banku so the average time between completions of successive units or in simple terms the average service time to perform an activity is what we call the cycle time the time it takes to complete an activity don't forget is the average time to complete an activity what is the average time to prepare okra stew what is the average time to um, cook rice those are what we call the cycle times so if you look at our diagram we can see property survey with a cycle time of 90 we can see title search with a cycle time of 30 minutes they are given in minutes it can be given in hours and in seconds but in our case it's given in minutes we can see the cycle time for credit report as 45 minutes so those are the average times to perform those activities all right we look at the next parameter that is the bottleneck when we say bottleneck let's look at a bottle the neck of a bottle is is the smallest part that limits the flow of a fluid or any substance you want to put into the bottle so it's like the neck of the bottle limits the inflow of any substance so the bottleneck in in operations is the slowest operation or the operation with the longest cycle time for example let's um, make a an analogy here we have four people you want to cook rice so you have divided the activities among ourselves the first person will wash the rice the second person will set up the fire the third person will put it put the rice on the fire and the last person will share when the rice is fully cooked we are all using five minutes to perform these activities but one person is using 10 minutes to perform his or her activity so you can see there will be a delay on his or her part that is where the bottleneck comes in the operation with the longer cycle time or the slowest operation just imagine a bank full of 100 customers with just a single teller see there will be a bottleneck here because the demand will exceed uh, the, the service that will cause a delay so you see some of the customers getting angry and some will be walking away that is a picture of a bottleneck so if you look at our um, diagram which of the activities has the longer cycle time that is property survey 90 minutes so that means it take 90 minutes more than an hour 90 minutes to survey a property that is really long a time so that is the bottleneck even if you add 
credit report entitled search is still not up to 90 minutes so you should be able to identify bottleneck activities in any process you find yourself in if you go to the bank and identify the bottleneck is it the time you are in a key the time you go to the teller or the time you are cashing out if you go to your faculty what are the bottlenecks is it the time you are submitting your assignment to the lecturer's office or the time you are waiting for the lecturer to come to the class you should be able to know all these bottlenecks so in our example property survey is our bottleneck now we move to another um, terminology or another parameter is the capacity capacity simply is the measure of output per unit time when a system is fully busy you see every system has the maximum or the threshold that beyond that it can't take any load so when the system is busy that is the capacity the limit what is your limit that is your capacity so capacity is mathematically given us one over ct per hour ct means cycle time which ha which is already explained so one over cycle time per hour is capacity the per hour is the time given it can be given in minutes and it can be given in seconds so it depends on on the question given so we can calculate the capacity for each activity within a process and also we can calculate the capacity for the entire or the overall system now if you look at the formula very well you can see that capacity is inversely related to cycle time because capacity is one over cycle time so the relationship between capacity and cycle time is inverse or you can call it negative all right so now get your calculator ready mine is here it's on now we are going to calculate the capacity of some of the activities within a process flow diagram let's begin with the title search don't forget capacity is one over cycle time per hour here in our diagram they gave us in minutes so we're going to multiply by system minutes because system minutes can't amount to one hour so now title search the capacity for title search will be one the one is constant it's in the formula don't, don't worry about how we got the one it's one one over what the cycle time for title say check from the diagram it is 30 1 over 30 then you multiply by 60 and that will give you 2 if you do it correctly so that means every hour two title searches are done every hour or every system means two title searches are done so now let's make an, an analogy here if you work for eight hours and every hour you do two searches you do two title searches how many searches would you have done within the eight hours it's 16. another example the same with the same um, title search two title searches per hour let's assume you work for 24 hours which is not possible let's make an example you work for 24 hours and every hour you're able to do two title searches that means within the 24 hours we would have done 48 title searches that is the capacity so the moment you get a capacity of an activity within an hour if you want to know the overall capacity just multiply by the number of hours used within the day as we can see here so that's why we had 16 applications per day that is the eight hour shift now let's move on to the next parameter the system capacity we can find the capacity for each activity and also the overall system but here the capacity of the entire system is determined by the bottleneck capacity yes so the system capacity 
a stand amount or equal to the bottleneck capacity. Don't forget the bottleneck capacity is the activity with the longest cycle time or the slowest operation. So it's given by one over the cycle time of the bottleneck. Now the question is why do we say that the the capacity of the whole system is the, the, the bottleneck capacity? Yes, it, it really makes sense. Let's create an analogy here. You see, if you remember the rice scenario, we have divided activities among us, so but one person is using 10 minutes to perform his or her activity. That will cause a delay before and after him. There will be excess of inventory at one point and there will be loss of inventory at one point. But you realize that that person causing the delay is, has changed how the overall system is done. The slowest operation it takes the overall system. You see, the slowest part of the system tells you the speed the overall system should go. Because if you, we all know that this person is going to use 10 minutes and we are using 5 minutes, what do we do? We will relax. So just one activity is changing the whole system. So to improve a system, you need to look at the bottleneck. Ignoring the bottleneck and trying to improve the other processes is a waste of time. Because an hour lost in a bottleneck is an hour lost in the whole system. That is an analogy. That is why we say that the capacity of the bottleneck is the same as what the system capacity. So in our diagram, we realize that one of the activities had a cycle time of 90. That was the bottleneck. So if you want to find the capacity of that activity, that is the same as the capacity of the entire system. So per our diagram, the system capacity will be 1 over 90. 90 was the activity for, I think, let, let's go back and check. Let's go back and check what I did for property survey. Mm -hmm. So property survey is the bottleneck activity because it has the highest cycle time. So 1 over 90 times what? 60. And that will give us 2 over 3 or in decimals 0 0.666. That is the capacity of the overall system. Because that's the weakest part. You see, your weak part is, 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 is like, that is where we can use to get you. So if you're able to work on your weakest part, aren't you strong? Yes. So every one hour, 0 0.66 applications are done on title search. So if you work eight hour shift, you just multiply the 0 0.66 by eight. And that will give you 5.33. So that means our system capacity within that 8-hour shift is what? 5.33. Now, let's talk about capacity utilization. Like I said early on, every system has a limit. But in normal circumstance, you can enjoy the full limit. You can enjoy it to some part. So the question is, how much have you consumed in relation to the limit? So capacity, sorry, capacity utilization is a measure of how much output is actually achieved relative to the process or system capacity when fully busy. So it is units processed per hour or day all over what the system or process capacity which is the same as what the bottleneck capacity so let's assume in our case that five mortgages are processed in an eight hour shift let's assume that five mortgages are processed within an eight hour shift the capacity utilization will be given by the number of units produced 
or process per hour or day is five over the bottleneck capacity which was calculated as 5.33 5.33 times 100 we want to find the percentage and that will give you 93.80 percent so that means the capacity utilization is 93.80 percent though in our, in our um, slide we had 93.75 percent that one if you want to know why it is 93.75 just add one decimal to the five make it 5.333 mm -hmm. so if you make it 5.333 get it's just a, a minor error which can be corrected but if you make it two decimal place as 5.33 that is where you are going to get the um, 93 point there it is it's not it's not an issue so that is the capacity utilization in our case let's move on okay let's talk about the throughput time throughput time so as the name connotes the throughput time is the time to complete a process from the time of arrival to the time of exit it's like you are passing through um, the, the system as you start so you finish so the throughput time is the sum of the critical path operation times plus the average time spent in all keys now there's a key word here. if you say critical path the critical path is the longest path within any operation the an activity or an operation with the longest cycle time, the longest path to take in an operation is what we call the critical path. So you go back to our diagram and try to identify the critical path. See, there are a lot of paths in the diagram, a lot of arrows, but which of the paths have the longest cycle time? That is our critical path. So any activity that is not on the critical path, we don't add it to the throughput time. So if you look at a diagram very well, the average time in mortgage application key plus property survey plus average time in completed application key plus final approval will give you the throughput time. So now, let's, this is our diagram. Now we said throughput time, we are talking about all activities on the critical path plus all activities in key now property survey is on the critical path but credit report and title search is not on the critical path because even if you add credit report and title search is 75 if i'm correct which is less than property survey so property survey is the longest path so the longest path in an activity is the critical path that is why the throughput time we just added the 90 minutes to the final approval that will give you 105 per hour question because they didn't give us any um, time for mortgage and the other uh, the other uh, the average time in key so per this diagram the throughput time will be 90 that is the activity on the critical path plus the final approval that is 15 and that will give you more than five minutes i hope we are clear let's move on okay now we go to the rush order flow time we are rushing so the moment we are rushing we don't want to join a key no so the rush order flow time is the time to go through the system from beginning to end without any key so you see, there is a thin line between the throughput time and the rush order flow time. Sorry, the throughput time takes into consideration the time waited or wasted in key, or the time in use for waiting. But the rush order flow time ignore all keys because we, we are rushing through the system. We want to swerve and get it fast and go. So we can we can say that. Um, throughput time minus 
key time or time in key will give you the rush order flow time. So per our diagram, the rush order flow time will be equal to what? The property survey plus what? Final approval. We have ignored all the, the key and that will give you 105. So here in our, in our example, it's like the throughput time is equal to the rush order flow time because we weren't given any time spent in key. Had we been given time or had, were we given time spent in key, the throughput time would, would be different from the rush order flow time. So it, it depends on the question. It's not always that um, the throughput time should be equal to the rush order flow time. No. Don't forget, rush order flow time, we didn't add credit report and title set because they are not on the critical path. Don't forget. The critical path is the longest path within an operation. Okay, let's move to the total diary labor content. The total diary labor content. That is the sum of all the operations times utilized in performing the service or what we call the billable hours or the touch times. You see, every process has some activities. And these activities are performed by human beings, labor. So all the activities that the labor was directly related, which was directly related to the desired goal is what we call the total direct labor content. So any activity that does not add value or that does not, that is not indirect, uh, it, it doesn't add anything direct to the goal, it's, it's not included. So waiting time and indirect labor hours like time spent on maintenance, time spent on break, time spent on um, informal conversations, they are not part of total direct labor content. You want the content that is directly related to the goal. So if you look at our, our diagram, there were four activities. Those are directly related to the mortgage application services. So total directly by content would be the 90 plus the 45 plus the 30 plus 15. And that will give you 180 minutes. That was the total direct labor content. I hope it's, it's clear. Good. Good. Let's move on. Then we go to direct labor utilization. You want to see how um, the, the percentage of time that workers actually spend contributing value to the service. How is the workers performing? How is the labor performing? So direct labor utilization is given by the total direct labor content already calculated over the bottleneck cycle time, then you multiply by the number of workers. So let's assume that in our mortgage example, there are four workers. And we know that the total direct labor content is 180. So it will be 180 over the cycle time for the bottleneck was title seven, that is 90 times how many workers? Four, and that will give you 0 0.5, you multiply by 100, and that will give you 50%. So let's try another example. Let's assume that um, our total direct labor content is 50, and our cycle time for the bottleneck is 70, and we have five workers. Let's see. Don't forget to multiply by 100. Let's see the direct labor utilization. That will give us 14.2. 9% to two decimal places. So that is how the direct labor utilization is calculated. So that is where we end today's video. It's been wonderful having you. Don't forget to ask any questions in the comment section below. I'll leave my contact and my email there. You can contact me for further clarification. So in our next video, we look at process layouts and work allocation. How do we draw and the process of an organization so you continue from there so then see you and bye bye